So it's now the next day and my conscience has got better than me. I'm going to replace these capacitors. I've got them all out, ready to go. They are a bit awkward to get to in some cases because I've got this board here in the way and also got this piece here, this supporting beam. Hello cat. What are you doing here? So it might be a bit hard to get around these parts, I might use the soldering iron only and then try and clear them out from the top side or something, I'm not quite sure. I'm just looking at these, just trying to see what I need to actually get to. So there's some over here, the vertical side. Once I figure out where they are, they go there, 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 and there. So those are all easy to get to. We'll do those ones first. Now I'm going to try it without putting fresh solder on first, we'll see how we go. Actually I need to get my little extractive going, so it's going to get a bit noisier. First cat. I'm going to take these out and put them in a sequence and then I'll test them on my LC102. Now the last one's got the cable tie on it, gotta get that off. Let's put the new ones in. I know this thing's going to be really noisy, annoying. I'll try and fold this over so you can see the markings. That's the plan anyway. Anyway, you get the idea. It's lots of that. I'm going to come over this side. Now what I've just done is I've taken out three of the screws that hold this subboard in. It's got relays on here. And just spun it out of the way so I can access this section. Obviously I'm trying to avoid touching any circuitry. Just touch it to the board. So this bit here is power supply. It's not so critical. I'm soldering the last three legs in now, or four or five legs, whatever the hell it is, <laughs> the last few caps. I don't know if I'm actually getting to show you on camera, but uh, I had to take the, the middle capacitor off from the top and clear the holes out from the top and then push it through from this side. So, not too unexpected though. I'm using quite a lot of heat here to try and get the heat through the ball. Hoping I can avoid soldering on the top side. That's the intention. We'll see if we go. The ground play on this board is quite severe. I was having to battle that quite a bit. So I was checking to see if the solder's flowed through, and it has in some cases, but not all cases. So I was going to touch up this side as well, which I didn't really want to do, but it's going to be necessary. Need to make sure I've got good connections on both sides. That one. A Q-tip and some alcohol and try and clean the flux up and any residue that's around these things. Just to leave it nice and clean and spick and span, it should be. Nothing too exciting about this, just give it a clean. I have to do the other caps on the other side as well yet, but uh, I'm not going to record the whole thing. Just wiping some of the Q-tip isn't it, it's not that exciting. Anyway. Just gives you an idea what I'm doing. So I just refitted that cable tie, cleaned up all the pads. I think I can put the cover back on again now. And the only thing I've still got to do is take the EPOM out and make a copy of it. Well, let's check for any magic smoke, see if I can put any caps in backwards. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, it's happened. So, alright. Camera draw. Count draw is actually lower. It was 41 watts before, now it's 25. Well, that's interesting. I oh, mind you, 41 watts might have been with that shorted tantalum I had before. I don't remember, actually. It might have been when it shorted with that tantalum. So maybe that's okay, I don't remember. Anyway, that's doing 138 milliamps. So anyway, no smoke. Check for anything getting warm, which is a sign of putting one in backwards. Yep, all good. Nothing problematic there. Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to pull this EPROM out next and make a copy of that. But what I'll do first is we'll check these capacitors and see if any of them are actually bad. Because I don't think I've tested them in circuit and they seem to be basically okay. There's only a couple there which I wasn't quite sure about. They seemed a bit odd, potentially. 
hook up to LCY2 there. We'll check the caps here if any actually bad or not. These are a good brand, so you know, they could be fine, but they're still going to be fine next year. That's the reason, right? So originally I was sort of on the fence about whether or not to replace them because they in circuit they just seem to be okay. In a way, it's a shame to waste caps which are perfectly good, but are they still going to be good in a year's time? Are they going to start leaking all over the board and ruining the board when it's sitting there being unused for a period of time? I'm not going to use this sort of thing all the time. I use this occasionally. It might be once every few months. I might turn the thing on and use it sort of thing. That's kind of where my gear is. I didn't want to run the risk of having one of these caps leak and damage the circuit board, which is why I've basically done this as a preventative measure more than anything else. They could be fine for another 10 years, but at least now I know they're definitely going to be fine for another 10 years. Hello, cat. It's not the same one. All right, so I've got it preset to test the 50 volt for certain microfarad caps. So we'll do that first. Obviously I've done the lead zero stuff first. All right, so let's do ESR first. So 0 0.11 ohms is going down to. That seems good. Value, so this is a 470, so it's doing 465, that's good. Leakage. Yep, that's dropping down. It did start off a bit higher than I thought it would do. I might just give that a minute and just uh, try that again in a second. Let's adjust the camera. Let's nice do this again. Yeah, it did start off quite high. A little bit suspicious about that. Let's do the other one. So that's the first one I removed. This is the second one I removed, which I did actually film at the time. Yes, that. Good. That's actually slightly better than the other one. Or well, jumping around slightly, maybe it's not. Capacitance is higher, which is what I saw in circuit as well. Interesting. Leakage. Look at that. Can't measure it. That's a bad cap. That cap is bad. Let's try the next one, which is a 2225 volt. So yes, replacing caps was a good idea because it turns out that one of those 2470s was bad. One of the ones I was suspicious about, I'm expecting. Okay, let's do that. It's 25 volts. Yeah, all good. BSR. Point one looks alright. Value looks pretty good, slightly high. Leakage. High leakage apparently. Might just give it a second. Try it again. It's quite high leakage. It's taken a while to get there. Yeah. So that cap is also bad. Before I go to the next one, I'm going to go to the 50 volts because it's a 35 volt one, so it's the same value. You see, let's do this one. That's good. A little bit low, 10% low, but that's not too unusual. Leakage is looking better on this one. Yeah, still fairly high, but it's so that's this one here. I've got two of these. Let's check the next one. Oh, I've got my cats fighting, that's great. Well, actually, they're not even my cats. These are really good. Value not bad. Leakage fairly high. Still thinks it's good though. It is coming down. Do it again. Yeah. So I'm s suspicious about these caps all being a little bit on the weak side. Three, two, one, two, three. My uh, 
10 volt. And I've got a big boy now, this thing here, which is running at 9 volts, which is to me a bit close. Really? This is bad? <laughs> bad ESR? Really? Mmm, okay. Surprised by that. I thought it would be a bit more tolerant than ESR for that level. Value. Slightly low, 10% low. Leakage. This could take a while because it's a big cap. Leakage is okay. So it's suspicious about the ESR, which is interesting. Got a 220. Mike Farad at 16 volt. Right, there's this little one here. Good ESR. Good value. Leakage is fairly high. Yeah, it says it's bad. So yeah, just like my decision to replace these caps was a good one. 100 microfarad. Yep, 25 volt. That's these ones. These are all right. Value's really good. Leakage really good. Now one of these I was suspicious about. Not necessarily both of them, but one of them I thought was a bit interesting. It just wasn't quite behaving the same as the other one. There was a difference between them. But it could have been a circuitry that was around it, so I'm not quite sure yet. So we'll find out. See if there's a difference. ESR is good. Value is good. Leakage is good. So, although this one's got slightly lower leakage than the other one has. Okay, so we did find a few caps which were a bit dodgy. So that's good. It wasn't a waste of time replacing those caps. They were needed. That's always a win. Anyway, that's that. Right, it's time to copy this EEPROM. So, I've got my extractor tool here. There we go. Put it in the programmer and read it. Right, I've refitted the EEPROM. Final test, make sure it still works. Great. Brilliant. All good. Happy with that. It's going. So there you go. All working. Happy with that. Very happy with that considering the price. Basically the money I saved from this compared to buying one which was working um, is significant. It's I think it's like saved a thousand dollars by buying one which is broken. So this one little tantalum cap here saved me a thousand dollars. And uh, these caps here obviously you know it's an investment it, although it was working okay as we saw and it seemed to test okay in circuit the LC102 wasn't so happy with some of these caps so good job we changed those as well so this goes to show that even though you do it in circuit testing you can't really 100% rely on it until you take them out and measure them properly with a proper capacitor tester because doing ESR measurements and capacity measurements in circuit only tell you part of the story leakage is part of that too so this one here, although the ESR was very low on this, it's only like it's at point zero six or something, the LC102 said it's bad cap. That was a longer video than I thought it was going to be, considering it didn't take me very long at all to find that cap and fix that. But I've backed up the EEPROM that's now copied. That's going to be available on the ko 4 bb website once I put it up there, and also add it to the thread on the EV book form, which is for this unit, which has been started by Bernadette about his one which prompted me to buy one as well <laughs> it's his fault I bought one Benedict already posted EEPROM data there but he's got a CPR version so he's put a CPR EEPROM data up there I'm gonna put up the non CPR EEPROM data so actually I think there's only two versions that's it so I think we're completely covered on EEPROM data which is brilliant other videos to watch down below there subscribe over here if you're not subscribed and there's a Patreon support link over there to help me buy a bit of test gear like this to do repair videos about. Catch you later.